looking out for these guys. <laughs> All right, we've learned that zombies are not <laughs> our best friend. But what happens if the Splatlands has become one of the last hubs standing after a zombie apocalypse? It seems these zombies can't swim or super jump though, which slowed their advance to the Splatlands. Due to a shortage of weapons, Sheldon is able to supply only one weapon to every citizen. What weapon do you want to have? I'm gonna sort every weapon because I can. In a tier list! Whee! We're gonna put some ground rules down for these zombies. Their inklings are octolings, so they have the same amount of health as a normal inkling or octoling. They're unaffected by ink mechanics, just like salmonids would be. So they walk to the same speed through enemy ink as they would on the ground. If they walk through enemy ink, they remove the ink from the ground as they pass through it. This also means if you fire at a horde of zombies, you could keep gaining your special. Because they can't swim though, they've adapted and they're able to walk faster than the average inkling or octoling. You can outspeed them by swimming, as they'll walk at about the same pace as you using an ink brush. But I can imagine that would become tiresome if you're doing it forever. So our first tier down here is known as the I'm sorry tier. <laughs> These are not weapons that you want to have. They all have very horrible glaring weaknesses. You've got the Rapid Blaster Pro Deco, for example, which you don't really want it. I know it has Whale, and Whale is actually one of the best options for this scenario, given that you can use Whale to absolutely just rip through in a pile of opponents, but when you don't have it, you're, you really got nothing. Splatter Scope? Oh. Oh, Splatter Scope is not a friend. First of all, anytime having a scope charger in this just kind of is not great. Think about being scoped and just having someone walk up behind you and attack you. You've got the undercover umbrella, which, uh, uh, undercover, everything about the undercover umbrella is kind of just weak. You're not, you're not, you're barely able to chip. You're barely able to survive after a reef slider. Don't do that to yourself. Bamboozler has the same problem as the Rapid Blaster Pro Deco, but at least the Rapid Blaster Pro Deco can hit more than one opponent at a time. The Bamboozler, you end up with a pile of people and it's just, it's just over. And we have the worst weapon, I would argue, out of all of the weapons in the game for this scenario, the Slosher Deco. <laughs> Oh, the Slosher Deco, man. The problem with the Slosher Deco is your special is zip. When you're done zipping, you go right back to where you were. It doesn't have a strong sub weapon, and the main weapon is so slow. Even though I know you can two slosh onto people, it's just not worth it. If you get these five weapons, I really hope you have a friend with you. All right, now we get to C tier, where at least we have weapons that can say, at least I'm better than those guys. <laughs> Aerospray gets to be at the very top of C tier, because let's be real, there's no really bad shooter in this game to have when you're fighting against basically a bunch of chum that move a bit faster. But Aerospray it is still Aerospray. Booyah Bomb is gonna let them play catch up to you. You have relatively little range and a very long time to kill compared to basically every other shooter in the game. It's, it's not the best. It, it really is not the best. E-Leader Scope is still an E-Leader, and Wave Breaker is gonna be really strong during this. Like, think about the power of Wave Breaker. If you put a Wave Breaker on the, on the ground, it basically is taking out anybody that's within that radius. What are they gonna do? Walk fast away from the waves? That's basically it. If they don't, it's over for anybody near you. Perfect escape. But it's still a scope, so bleh. The vanilla big swig is like the shooter of the roller class that is the aerospray. <laughs> Let that make sense. Let that make sense. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It basically doesn't really do enough damage to keep itself safe, but you do at least have a really wide roller to work with, and your kit isn't that bad for at least giving you an out. Squiffer's our first weapon with big bubbler. It also pierces but it also really isn't that strong, even though you have a really fast charge time. You're gonna probably get ran over if you're playing Swiffer, but Big Bubbler will keep you safe sometimes. I think it's safe to say if the zombies can only attack via melee, let's pretend that Big Bubbler does help keep you safe for just a smidge of time. When the Big Bubbler's up, they can't get in. But once the Big Bubbler is done, especially if you have a lot, just 
Hitting the shield, it, it might not be good very long. Clash Blaster is really fast when you're firing with it, so you could actually fire your Clash Blaster shots while also backing up from the zombies. Only problem is, of course, you're gonna run out of paint eventually, and your kit really doesn't give you much. The curling bomb's great for running away, though. We take those. Regular old Octo Brush is a friend. It has a pretty good bomb. It has not that great of a special, but it does have good reach, so I can at least give it that. I would want any of the other weapons in C tier over it, but I think you can understand why it's really not that bad. Here's another one of these rapid blaster pros, uh -huh. but this one has mist, and mist lets you actually like get out of a bad situation. You could slow the zombies down, get some more space, and keep firing away. With your indirect shots, you, you might you might be okay. <laughs> Dreadringer does stupid damage and has really good reach, but this thing, just like the range blaster right next to it, is slow. I would have rated both of these higher just because of their killing power before I remembered how bad they are when you have like a group of things all next to each other. At least the Dreadringer slosh hits everything. Poor range blaster, if you get it direct, you're really not hitting much behind you, which puts the range behind the dread. YouTuber has a really funny kit in this game. You've got a bomb, you've got your funny missiles, you've got the ability to pierce, you've got the ability to get a splat without a full charge. It's really fun, but you're still gonna get ran over like Squiffer, and this time you don't have a shield, so womp womp. <laughs> Splatbro and S-Blast both suffer in very, very similar ways. Both of them can do damage to multiple opponents at once, depending on how you shoot, but neither of them are really fast. They both have a special that can blow up a lot of zombies at once, but they don't really have a way out if they end up in a really bad situation. H3 can get one guy per set of shots. <laughs> You've got cooler to run, so that's why it's not gonna be in the I'm sorry tier. Octobrush Nouveau, like, is still an Octobrush, so it's still good, but I can't put it anywhere near regular Octobrush. Let's, let's be real here. <laughs> Maybe I could switch with 8th Tree, but I'm gonna keep it there for now. Rain is really nice, though, because just like Wavebreaker, zombies walk through it too long, they disappear, but Rain doesn't really have a lot of staying power, and it's a little easier to get out of the rain compared to getting out of the Wavebreaker, you know? Sniper Rider is like a pity C tier weapon because you know what? At least unlike the Bamboozler, you get five shots on a single tank, so you can get rid of two guys instead of one guy. It's better than not having a weapon at all, and then maybe you're just hiding in the shoal and hoping for the best. <laughs> all right, Sheldon's doing a little better with you now if you're getting a weapon in B tier. Dynamo Roller isn't gonna be an A, just because if you run out of ink, it's gonna get really bad real fast, but let's be real, we all know Dynamo is a really good weapon in Salmon Run, but it excels the most when you have bigger things to fight, like Kohawks. Oh yeah, Luna Blaster Neo, give me the hammer. Give me the ability to hit a bunch of opponents at once, make my shots a bit faster than those silly other blasters we've talked about before. But that's, that's about it. If you get ran over, you're getting ran over. Lol. Splattershot Pro has a good out. It's got Crab. And Crab, in this case, totally a friend. Also, you can throw your point sensors from really, really far away, so if you have good cover, you're actually doing pretty good with this thing. Not good enough for A tier, but still pretty good. Glugadulius doesn't get much tools, which is why I'm gonna put it below the Splattershot Pro, but you do get Booyah Bomb, which is a great slowdown tool, and you get splats relatively quickly, but you can only go for one guy at a time, so it's really limiting in that way. Regular Slosher is miles better than Slosher Deco. Having the bomb and the strikes really makes up for a relatively slow main weapon. Still not better than the stuff in the B tier above it, but still pretty good. Regular Luna is still really strong. Also, Rapid Blaster and Regular Blaster both have their ups and downs, but all three of these guys are blasters, so it's kind of hard for them. They don't have the magical power that the Luna Blaster Neo has, so I'm just kind of lumping them all together here in the middle of B tier. e -Leader and Dually Squelchers both have Wavebreaker, and Wavebreaker, as I mentioned beforehand, big friend. e -Leader pierces like crazy, but gets ran over easily. Dually Squelchers has great mobility, can get rid of guys pretty quick, but also gets ran over pretty easily. They both have different weaknesses, but they both, I feel like, would play about the same. Sorry, Nova players, um, you can't have opening gambit here, but you can have whale, and like I said beforehand, it's really easy to farm special if you keep shooting, so I think Nova really wouldn't do that bad. Here's our first instance of ZNF. Also, still, the scope, not surprising, regular ZNF, we'll see later. It has strikes, 
it can pierce. It has a wall so you can get away, even though I'm sure the zombies could just go around the wall eventually. I don't know, do they run straight? We can pretend they run straight. Maybe that makes sense. <laughs> Anything zip caster just isn't gonna succeed very often. But Tetris at least can give themselves more space than most of the other zip weapons we've seen so far. So that gives it a little bit of a bump in the B tier. Dually Squelters are still a fun weapon, even if they're the custom one. I can't really put these down too far. They have more range than Tetras, and they're honestly fun. The second Big Swigs Roller just kind of clears in a salmon run kind of context, so it just gets to hang out in B tier. B for Big Swig, yay. L3 and Aerospray both have versatile damaging kits, and that puts them in B tier at least by a bit, even if they might both struggle for being a little low damage output. I couldn't put Explo above either one of them though. Explo really likes Salmon Rum and there are Flyfish, does not like being jumped by so many people at once. It's a slow weapon, but it has rain, so it keeps it at sea. Now, this is the better GooTuber for this scenario, because you have Hammer, you have a way out, yum yum, and you still pierce. Hooray! Like I said beforehand, the zombies do move at about ink rush speed, so it never hurts to have a weapon that can go at that speed. But Inkbrush Nouveau really doesn't have much going for it once you're up in their face. So I gotta kinda put it down here. I couldn't in good conscience put Tenebrella anywhere below B tier, but I couldn't really put it up any higher, so it's right here at the end. Shield, great for leaving, but that's about all that you've got with this one. The other tent is gonna be way more useful with that Zooka. I'm gonna be so real with you. The A tier is mostly weapons that are just really good in Salmon Run or have a good kit that fixes any problems they might have. They're not as perfect as the weapons above them, but they're still really good. Like, Dapple Dooleys is one of the best Salmon Run weapons, but its kit doesn't do too much for it compared to the Dapple Dooley Nouveau, for example. We have a bunch of the other Splatlings in here, the Ballpoint with not as good of a kit, the Heavy Edit Splatling, we got the Pain Brush, which is clearly like the, the, best, the best brush, Let's be real here for Salmon Run, probably. We have Ink Brush, which we know moves at the same speed as the zombies. There's lots of really good stuff here. We got a bunch of the rollers. We've got your missile weapons, your fast weapons, your weapons that are really good at killing but have funny kits. You've got your precious, <laughs> precious juniors. It doesn't feel right to put them any higher, even though Junior does kind of slap. You've got things like Knot, which rip through opponents but have a lot of downtime. You got things with inkjet that are slow otherwise, like Brella. It's a good tier, but I'm saving you 15 minutes by not going through all of them one by one. Bye! S rank weapons are pretty good, but not all the way there. You could probably look at these weapons and understand why they're here. Sploosh is like a god tier salmon run weapon, but I don't think it clears all the way to S plus, because you have your hammer, you have your goods, you have your escape, but it just gets, you can get run over. Ah! Right next to it is its shooter companion, the glorious Splash-O-Matic! Ah, the Splash-O-Matic. It has crab. W what do you expect me to do? I can't put it any lower than this. Gray and Zap feels good in hand, has a lethal bomb, has Tacticooler. Moving on. You're all gonna hate the Clash Blaster placement here, but I think Clash Blaster kind of clears. It has Killing Bomb, it has Zooka to take care of things, and just like the Clash Blaster Neo, you move really quickly. I think you have great options here. I lumped an entire pile of Splatlings all together because they all do great things. Let's be real here, it's really hard to put any Splatlings really low, besides a couple. You've got the Kraken on the heavy, beautiful. Ballpoint has Inkjet, can't reach me up here. Nya, 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 nya. Mini has Glorious Bubble, love Bubble. Love being able to slow things down through Toxic Mist as well. And Hydra with its new and improved firing length, it's just really good. Tri Slosher is spam ZR win, so it's really not that bad to have. You can get ran over though, which is why I'm putting it below the Splatling. It's a little less versatile. Splat Dooley's great from the front, bad from behind. Entire kit kind of holds this mantra because it has crab. See, Jet, you have a lot of reach, which is really fun. Makes me really happy. Puts it a slight amount above regular heavy with Wave Breaker isn't as good as having Kraken. And Mini, which has Hammer, which really isn't going to be as good for you as having that free shield. Blob Lobber, you can't just put low in Salmon Run, just kind of not allowed. <laughs> I love Blob Lobber. I, maybe I'm biased here, but I think it'd still be really good. You can fire as you're running away. You can do all that jazz. You just don't have that Kraken that you're going to have with the Blob Lobber Deco. Regular roller or one shot, anything in front of it, which means that it's always going to be good. But if you have too many individuals around you, you can get ran over, especially from the back, which is why it's in the lower part of S tier. 
All right, all right, please listen. Dappledoolies go crazy in Salmon Run with that output. They're gonna go crazy here. But they're so short-ranged and not versatile compared to the sploosh that I gotta put it at the bottom of S instead of the top with S. But putting it at A rank feels silly. The kit of the Carbon Roller absolutely keeps it out of A rank. Carbon Roller Deco just goes nuts. This is Burst Bomb, this is Zooka, this is a one-shot slap. Love to see it. Here we are, fellas, finally at the cream of the crop. Here's your weapons in S+. This is one of the only tiers that I would argue isn't actually ordered because a lot of these weapons are really good and I don't really know what I would actually put at the top. I look at all these weapons and I'm really happy to have any of them. Shot is a super versatile weapon. We all know, given uh, if, you're, if you're watching this video in the fall, late fall of 2023, you know what's going on right now. Funny Zooka moment. Same goes for Squeezer. Squeezer's two different firing modes means you can be safe from up close and from afar. If your friend has a Squeezer, you feel really good about yourself. And you have wall, you just, you're just winning. Congrats. 52 gal shreds through everything that exists. Why wouldn't you want 52 gal? 96 is the same, but 96 has the wall and it has the Kraken. The Kraken does so much for you. That's why you see also the crack on roller and the blah blah or deco up in here. Kraken just fixes your problems. You can go gliding straight through huge piles of zombies. Just just remember to go back before it's over or you'll regret that a lot. <laughs> The Neo splash matic I'd argue, is a little bit better than the regular splash matic because the strikes are super useful and don't lock you into place as badly as Crab does. I know, Crab is that free shield, but strikes just do a different type of thing. And this one has a lethal bomb, so it just feels good, man. And then I just feel like it'd be silly to not have T-Tech up at the top, because T-Tech is basically as versatile as normal shot, so there it is! And with that, we have a glorious, completed tier list from your best of the best to your worst of the worst. Where did your favorite weapon fall? Do you agree with me? Or do you hate half of what I said? I had a lot of fun shoving these weapons like all over the place on the screen. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good one.